Archaeologists know a lot, but they can't be expected to know everything about every discovery they make. A confused archaeologist might seek the help of a scientist if they've come across something they can't explain. But there are times when scientists are left as confused as the archaeologists. We live in a world of ancient wonders, and some of the most remarkable of those wonders are in this video. There are so many myths and legends about the origins of Arthur's Stone in Herefordshire, England, that it's hard to know where to start. The most fantastical of them is that King Arthur slew a giant here, and the giant left his elbow prints on the stone as he fell. That obviously isn't true, but historians have never been able to say for sure why the ancient inhabitants of the area decided to arrange this collection of quartz conglomerate rocks here around 5,700 years ago. We might know more if experts were allowed to conduct a full excavation of the site, but the level of protection given to the stones prevents that from happening. In August 2021, archaeologists conducted a dig as close to the southernmost point of the monument as they're allowed and found something unexpected. There are three other stone monuments buried here, along with burial mounds created 6,000 years ago. It seems that Arthur's stone was once part of an even larger network of stone monuments and was likely an important ceremonial center. There even appears to have been a large timber building here that was burned down deliberately. So now archaeologists have a new mystery to solve. If you've seen the science fiction movie Stargate, you might find our next mystery quite familiar. This is a stone carving called Sakwala Chakraya, which many a science fiction fan has pointed out looks a lot like the Stargate interfaces from the film and subsequent television series. You'll find it in the Ranmasu Uyana Park in Sri Lanka. We know very little about the carving and its surroundings, apart from the basic facts which include the fact that everything here was built to honor King Tissa some 2,300 years ago. The magnificent pavilions that overlook the site were added in the late 8th century. The symbols on the Sakwala Chakraya carving have never been deciphered. Archaeologists aren't even sure whether they're an attempt at communication. Some have speculated that it might be a very early attempt to create a map of the world, or at least the extent of the world that was known to the people who lived here all that time ago. Even that's just a guess, though. The truth is, we have no idea what Sakwala Chakraya is, or what it means, but there's almost certainly some encoded information here. The function of the stone monuments that make up the Plain of Jars and Laos remains unknown. The most popular theory is that they are funerary monuments of some kind, the theory says that the bodies of the dead were placed inside the jars to decompose, and then removed again once nothing but the skeleton remained. They would then be buried nearby. The idea is partially supported by the number of human burials in the area, but there's very little evidence within the mysterious jars themselves. They're scattered all over an area that covers several miles. We didn't even know how old the jars were until March 2021 when the results of an optically stimulated luminescence study suggested that they've been standing in C2 for about 4,000 years. That's a big problem for those who believe in the human burial theory, because most of the remains that have been found here date to the 9th century at the earliest. It's possible that the jars were used for funerary activity at one stage, but they were more than 2,000 years old by the time that happened. What were they used for prior to the 9th century? And why were they made in the first place? Is there a lost city of giants in Ecuador? Archaeologist Bruce Fenton thinks so. In 2013, he ventured deep into the jungle and found a massive pyramid-shaped structure, 260 feet tall and 260 feet wide made up of thousands of evenly cut two-ton blocks. He also found oversized stone tools at the site. The folklore of the people who live close to the area says that a race of giants once lived in the jungle. Fenton thought he'd found proof. It's hard to disagree with him. 
Some of the stones have circles cut through their middles, which seems to be the nail in the coffin for the archaeologists who prefer to believe that the pyramid is a natural rock formation. Fenton has struggled to attract funding for further expeditions to the site, but there's a new theory about what he found there. It's now thought that this could be the long-lost mausoleum of Atahualpa, the final emperor of the Inca. Even after he was captured and killed by the Spanish, he's thought to have been buried with a huge amount of gold in a secret location. If that's the case, the gold might still be buried with him inside the pyramid. That should be a good enough reason to go back. There's a place in Wisconsin, USA, where modern road builders have committed an act of vandalism against an ancient monument. The place is Baraboo, and the monument carries the simple title of Man Mound. Wisconsin is where the ancient culture known only as the Mound Builders was based. They're named for the many hundreds of earthworks they left all over the state, often close to rivers or other sources of water. Archaeologists don't know why the earthworks were made, and Native American tribes don't have any information either. They're a thousand years old and belong to a culture that vanished long ago, without leaving behind any written records. Many of the earthworks depict animals, but Man Mound is an effigy of a large male. It's the last anthropomorphic effigy of its kind in the country. The figure has two horns on its head, which might make it a shaman, or a depiction of a deity or demon. Its legs are missing because a road was built through the lower half of the 214-foot-long figure during the late 19th century. No formal archaeological excavation has ever been carried out here, which seems like a missed opportunity. Eating chocolate eggs at Easter is a tradition in many parts of the world today, but it hasn't always been the traditional way of exchanging eggs at Easter. Before the era of chocolate eggs came along, people exchanged painted eggs as Easter gifts instead. That's an idea that Christians may have taken from elsewhere. There are some stunning painted ostrich eggs on display in the British Museum in London, England, and they have nothing to do with Easter or Christianity. That would be impossible, because the eggs are 5,000 years old. Their purpose appears to have been the same, though. People like to give them to each other as gifts. The eggs in the British Museum were acquired in Italy, but didn't come from there because ostriches aren't native to the country. Instead, the eggs were traded from North Africa and the Mediterranean. During the Bronze Age and the Iron Age, they're thought to have been highly sought-for items. A 2020 scientific analysis of the eggs suggests that they came from wild ostriches, so obtaining them would have been a hazardous task because of the violent way ostriches defend their nests. We wish we knew what made them so special that people would risk their lives to obtain them. The Nazca culture in Peru was responsible for a lot of things we don't understand, from the Nazca lines to the Pukois. Were they also responsible for these bizarre-looking three-fingered mummies? The mummies are said to have been found in the Nazca region of Peru in 2015, but opinion is split over whether they're a hoax or not. The way the bodies are presented is consistent with the ancient Nazca tradition. The Nazca always buried their dead in a seated position, with their arms wrapped around their legs, and that's what we see with these mummies. The alien hunting and UFO enthusiast community quickly became excited about the possibility that the ancient inhabitants of Nazca might not have been from this world. But a 2016 study gave us another explanation. Apparently, these mummies are made from bits and pieces of bodies robbed from graves and then stuck back together like Frankenstein's monster. The white substance that they're painted with may have been an attempt to mask the joints, and the two missing fingers on each hand might have been removed deliberately to make the discovery more newsworthy. That would be a disappointing end to this mystery if it's true, but it does beg the question of when the hoax was perpetrated and where the body parts came from. The monument, known as Balanced Rock in North Salem, New York, USA, is an incredible thing to look at. Nobody debates that fact. 
The debate here is whether the rock's unusual appearance is the result of nature or nurture, and it's a debate that's been going on for a very long time. The top boulder is so much bigger than the smaller stones beneath it that it looks like the whole thing should come crashing down in a high wind, and yet it doesn't. You might wonder how anything could have been left looking like this accidentally, but large stones are sometimes left on top of smaller ones by melting glaciers. Ask a local and they'll tell you that druids created Balancing Rock roughly 1,000 years ago, but there were no druids in America 1,000 years ago. Even if we ignore that fact, Balancing Rock is closer to 10,000 years old than 1,000 years old. Even the graffiti on the side of the monument is old. It's been there since the 18th century. Is this stunning sight a natural phenomenon or a 10,000-year-old work of art? There's something odd about the potbelly sculptures of Guatemala, and we don't just mean their unusual shapes. These vaguely human-shaped figures are roughly 2,000 years old, and they all have something in common. The forehead of each of the statues is magnetic. In some cases, so are the cheeks and the navels. We don't know whether the people who lived in Guatemala 2,000 years ago understood much about magnetism and how it worked, but they obviously knew there was something special about these stones. They can't have created the magnetic effect themselves, so most historians think that the magnetic properties of the rock might have been caused by a lightning strike during a storm. The natives would have noted the magnetic effect of the rock after the storm and might have attached religious significance to it. The figures are often carved directly into the rock and reach a maximum height of about six feet, although many are small enough to carry around with you. Nobody knows who the figures represent, but the best guess of historians is that they're effigies of the dead. The magnetic powers of the figures would, therefore, become a representation of the power of the deceased person continuing even in death. This next ancient wonder is known as the Hand of Hercules, but to call it a hand is being kind. Considering how little of the hand remains at the site of Amman, Jordan, it might be fairer to call it the Fingers of Hercules. There are just three fingers here, and archaeologists aren't sure whether they were ever attached to a full-sized hand in the first place. The fingers can be found, appropriately enough, in the ruins of the former Temple of Hercules, right at the top of the tallest hill in Amman. The temple was never finished, which has led historians to speculate that it was a project started by bored Roman soldiers while they were stationed here during the Marcus Aurelius-led 2nd century invasion of the region. If so, the soldiers may have gotten their measurements badly wrong. The temple would have been 100 feet long and 90 feet wide if it were finished, and so would have been larger than any in Rome. If the statue of Hercules was also to scale, these fingers would have been attached to the hand of a figure that stood 40 feet tall. Speaking of ancient wonders perched on hilltops, here's the Chanquilo Observational Complex in the Cosma Sechen Oasis of Peru. The structure is approximately 2,300 years old, putting it among the oldest of its kind in the Americas. The complex is laid out a little like a military fort, with clearly defined areas for families to live together and other larger areas for social gatherings. It's conceivable that the site might actually have been a fort, but that's not why its 13 distinctive towers were erected. The towers are joined by two observation platforms positioned at each end of the structures, by measuring the position of the sun and moon between the towers, observers on the platforms could mark the passage of time and predict the coming of summer, winter, and the rainy season. We know that the Inca, who many people consider to be the most advanced of the ancient races in Peru, were way ahead of their time in terms of their skill as astronomers, but this site predates their existence. We have no idea who made Chanquilo, but it's possible that everything the Inca knew about astronomy came from them. You've heard of the Great Wall of China, but have you ever heard of the Great Wall of California? We imagine that you probably haven't, 
and that might be because we know so little about it. These walls run on for 50 miles between San Jose and East Bay, Berkeley, almost unbroken, but serve no clear purpose. That's why they're sometimes known as the Berkeley Mystery Walls. The walls vary in height, but are never taller than five feet, and so are of little use from a defensive perspective. They cross through difficult-to-reach locations and are sometimes made of stones that weigh more than one ton each. They even twist into a massive spiral at one point, with a boulder in the middle of the spiral. The spiral then untwists, straightens back out, and the walls keep on going for several more miles. Nobody knows how old the walls are, but they're thought to predate the arrival of Europeans into the area. They've been there for as long as any Native American tribe is aware of. They're among the greatest unsolved archaeological mysteries of America, but almost no research has been done into their origin. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!